Okay, next I'd like to welcome Julian Floon, Chief Executive of Sport Canterbury, who will speak regarding item five, Sports Build Nick. Thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou, everyone. Um, I present this deputation on behalf of the major regional sports organisations in Ōtutahi Christchurch. To kick off, um, from our perspective, um, this draft sports field network plan has been a long time in the coming. Um, the conversation around this started probably seven or eight years ago. So on behalf of the sporting community, it is a real acknowledgement that um, this is urgent and much, um, much needed. I think the other thing that um, I'd like to emphasise is that this process has been done with, not to, the sporting community and some real acknowledgement of council staff in terms of bringing the sporting community into the conversation to develop this uh, strategic approach. Um, really, really important. While um, today I present it on behalf of the major regional sports organisation, it's really important to uh, emphasise that the collective membership base of who have had a significant input into this process um, is around 60,000 membership base. So all the uh, organisations up there today um, have had an input, but they've also taken this um, plan back into their respective communities as well. Um, so it's, we, while it's um, a really challenging conversation to have in terms of breadth of our sector, um, we're pretty confident, for example, if we get it right for touch, other sports like flag football, kiorahi, and other sporting organisations will benefit as well. So. Um, it was just a, a scope, breadth, depth conversation in terms of how we created and then put it into this, um, this, this strategy. I think it's really important too that the document um, does actually value the value of sport for um, our community, our whanau and our wellbeing individually. Um, and a lot of the goals around it will talk to the value of sport as well. Um, but we need a strategic approach to the ongoing uh, future proofing of sports fields, um, artificial turf turf provision as well as floodletting of our facilities. Um, acknowledging also that this conversation is really, really complex. We've got a diverse, increasingly diverse culturally based population, we've got an ageing population, we've got intensification of our population um, and with that intensification comes increased demand and also grappling with the issues around climate change. So. I think the thing, the message that um, that I want to emphasise today is that we don't have all the answers, but our sporting community wants to be part of the solution and have input into the solution as we move forward into the plans implementation. Just ducking in quickly into the three goals, um, complete endorsement of, um, in my world we talk a lot about influencing participation around where people live, learn, work and play. So that locally based provision of infrastructure for communities to participate is really, really important. We know in deprived communities, one of the barriers to participation is transport. So if we can have an infrastructure and a network that at least is locally based, so we can have easy access. And if it can't be locally based, it's close to um, transport, active transport, um, public transport infrastructure as well. Moving forward, we need to think about artificial turfs. We need to make, think about uh, multi-use sport and flexible spaces for um, increased demand, changing provision of, of what our, our communities want under an umbrella of, of traditional sport is really, really important. So in, we collectively endorse the first goal. We also acknowledge that um, we need a, a strategic approach to the, to the city's provision of floodlit uh, sports fields that are evenly distributed and accessible across all Tatahi. And we need to make sure that um, where those where those positions are, or that the infrastructure is based, it's close to active transport as well. So really, really important around that. And I talked a little bit about flexibility around future um, trends around sport and active recreation participation. But again, um, the sports that we we think are really, really important in terms of a big membership base needs to be um, catered for and provided for and future proof for as well. We know that um, there's, a, there's a tier of infrastructure that we need to think about too, with an aspiration of making sure that um, we have above quality as, as high in terms of provision of facilities. Um, we also um, want to attract uh, national, regional, international events to the city, and, that, and with that we need a high quality provision. And we just need to think about the, the, the rugby, uh, women's rugby team in town this week playing Canada on Sunday. So we need to make sure that those training facilities moving forward um, are catering for the best quality we can possibly provide as well, which is all obviously a bit of a tension when we're weighing up community as well as high performance sport. 
I think in summary, it's it's really keeping us in the tent. Um, as I said before, it's not um, we don't have all the answers, but we want to be consulted, especially around um, when the plan starts prioritising projects, um, and also in that sort of um, cross um, overlapping of seasonal seasonal allocation of of um, uh, access from between sport, winter sports and summer sports is really, really important. So I guess the key message on behalf of the sporting community, keep us engaged, keep us in the tent, um, and we, uh, we want to have a say in terms of the prioritisation of infrastructure moving forward with a real focus on um, floodlit provision around facilities, but also how our sports fields are performing moving forward. Okay. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Templeton, please, and then Councillor Johansson. Kia ora, thank you so much for that and thank you for all the involvement that you've had in the development of this plan. These are really large pieces of public land though um, that many members of the public use sort of during the day for informal recreation, those kind of things. Do you have any objection to this um, going up for consultation so that the wider community can have their say on the plan as well? Not, not at all. Yeah. I, I guess that the mandate in conversation with, with your staff was it was around sports provision initially, but we know that um, active communities, walking, cycling, uh, recreational based activities are just as important too. So, um, yep, absolutely. Thanks. Councillor Johansson, it, I, know, I know you haven't put your hand up, but I'm sure you've got some questions. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, uh, in our report, there's no copy of the submissions that people have made. Have you got copies of the submissions that people have made to the plan? And are they able to be distributed to councillors? No, I haven't. Um, no. Okay. I, what, what, what's, what are you alluding to? So as decision makers, yeah. we have no information about what... We've been told that there's been extensive engagement through Sport Canterbury and RSOs. But in the... Um, so we've been given lots of information about the engagement that's occurred. But in our report today, ahead of adopting the plan, we don't have uh, that feedback in our report. So I was just wondering if there was feedback that had been given to Sports Canterbury. As I understand it, there were more minor sports that were engaged with, so sports that weren't attached, or recreation users not attached to RSOs, where Sport Canterbury did engagement. And I'm just wondering if we have a copy of the feedback. So we, we coordinated conversations with the sporting organisations that are up there. Um, which provided full endorsement to the plan. And then, as I said at the beginning, if we can cater for those sports, the wider sporting community will be catered for. And I use the example of touch. Flag football, kiorahi will be catered for if we get it right for touch. That was the philosophy around how we approached it. In terms of documentation around submission, that's probably a key question for the council staff. Thank you. Councillor Henstock, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Julian. Uh, in response to the question from Councillor Templeton about uh, going wider for consultation. I note that you supported that. If that occurs, then undoubtedly there will be further delays, extensive delays, uh, in actually getting this underway. I know when you uh, started your deputation, you talked about this being a long time coming. Can you perhaps comment on the need for some speed in actually moving this forward as opposed to further planning and consultation? Yeah, it's a real it's a real balance. You know, I've got a number of sporting organisations behind me today, and they'll be saying we've got to get on with it. We've waited too long, um, and so that's the tension you've got to weigh up. I think um, my advice would be get on with it, and then bring the the rest of the sporting community along uh, as well. Um, there's some real need here and now, um, so sports need to need some progress. Um, while they've while they've been receptive to um, and supportive of the fact that they've been involved. It's got to turn into you know, less do more doing, less, uh, less talking. Yeah. Okay. And thank you, Councillor Barb, please, and then we might move on. Um, thanks, Julian. Um, I'm just particularly interested in your comments around floodlights. Obviously, they would dramatically oh. increase the capability um, for um, evening play and, and night play. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, you know, how much more efficient that is going to make uh, field well, there's, there's two, there's, it means that we can get access for longer periods of time, but also that if, if it's mixed in with multi-use artificial services, the intensification of that use is, is also increased. We know that if you look what's happened with netball, I know it's indoor rather than outdoor with the going in the indoor facility, is that 
it's not a, a netball um, provision during a Saturday morning on a Saturday. It's it's five, six, seven days a week. Mm. So that that utilisation, intensification, changing work behaviours um, of people's lives, we need to cater for that in the future. Flexibility, multi-use is really what we need to look at. And with that, increased time through um, lighting as well. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Good, an good answers and good questions, everybody, as well. So thank you for your sure, time. Thank, thank you. you. So next, I'd like to welcome Michael and Bugs to, from Climate Liberation Aotearoa, who are here to 